Good morning, Jesus Image Church. How's everyone doing this morning? I just want to welcome everyone in the room and those who are watching online. It is such a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Such a good day to be in the house of the Lord. So even right now, as we're preparing to go into worship, I just ask that every single person in this room would posture their hearts on the one thing, the one man who is found worthy. This morning, I just really felt on my heart, Isaiah 9, verse 6, and it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Oh Jesus, we welcome you in this place this morning. We just say that we just turn all of our affections right towards you where it rightly belongs, Jesus. We just want you to come. We just want you to dwell among us, Lord. We just say there is no one like you and there never will be. So Lord, we just turn all of our thoughts and all of our minds and all of our bodies, our spirit, we just turn it towards you this morning to the one who is found worthy, to the one who is most holy, to the one who is worthy and to the one who is most holy. We just say that, Lord, and we just pray that this morning you would receive the reward of your sufferings, Lord. God, I just pray that you would break through in this place, that you would just rip the roof right off, Lord, and that there would be such a praise that breaks forward this morning, and that you would be glorified here in this moment and on this earth, Lord. We yield to you this morning. We say, have your way, Jesus. We've just come to love you and to lavish our love upon you. There truly is no one like you. We worship you. Child of 
for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Yes. 
precious blood of the There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. of Yahweh, my one desire, cover me now with your mighty hand, and from the world, oh Lord, may I stand in your dwelling place, in your dwelling
Lord, we love you. Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you that you have cleansed us with your blood, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your cross. We thank you today for your cross, Lord, that you have cut off our sinful nature. You have cleansed us with your blood. You are our faithful high priest. Lord, we give you freedom today to do whatever you want to do. Lord, disrupt us in the best way today, Lord. We thank you for every salvation today, Lord. Thank you for every baptism, every newness of life today that comes out of that waters, Lord. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. We love your house, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way today. Let us not get in the way. We love you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to introduce Raul that's going to come up. Lead us in off. Hello, everyone. Whoa, sorry. If you're up here, you can uh, feel free to head back to your seats. Um, you probably already know, but I'm here to re receive the Lord's offering into the kingdom today, this morning. Uh, and I just, I quickly wanted to share uh, probably a lesson, more so a lesson that um, I've learned when it comes to giving and, and tithing and offering. And it's in Philippians 1. Um, I'll start with verse 3. It says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of the grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. And, you know, later on in chapter four, Paul talks about how the, the Philippians were one of the first first people who would partner with him in the gospel. Nobody else wanted to do so, and they were the first ones that stepped up to the plate. And as we give today, tithes, offerings, um, anything beyond that, keep in mind that there's some, there's some measure of grace that you will never have access to unless you give, because when you give in a house like this, I mean, I know pastors, uh, I think pretty well, and I know the heart behind what's happening here, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, uh, the pursuit and the purity of worship, the purity um, of their love for Jesus. And the offerings, the tithes that are received in this house go out and they bless many missionaries and uh, men and women of God who are fighting for the lives of people, bringing them, saving them out of the pits of hell, bringing them into the kingdom of God. You know, in areas like Mozambique and, and Europe and, I mean, all over the world, really, Asia. Somewhere most of us will probably never go, maybe we're not even called to, but just like with Paul, the Philippians were able to partake of the grace he received through imprisonment and preaching the gospel that they would have never been able to partake of unless they gave. So when they, they, when they gosh, I don't wanna call it an investment, but that's probably a, the right word. When they invested their, their tithes and their offerings into the ministry, into what he was doing, they were able to reap a spiritual reward, the grace of someone who would suffer for the gospel. I grew up in a culture that was um, very not tithing and offering. It was kind of like, mm, that's not for today. And I realized that, you know, years later, I gave my life to the Lord sincerely, and I realized as the Lord was teaching me that the 
there was parts of his heart that I couldn't access because I wouldn't bless the people who are doing things that I'm not doing and I'm not able to do. And so, and then I wouldn't do those things for my lack of faith or lack of calling or whatever it is. And so you kind of remain in your own little bubble of like just the grace that you have access to because of your faith and what you're pursuing the Lord for. And so I really want to encourage you, you know, I, I've said this here before, um, tithing is not generosity, tithing is obedience. And obedience is, is a result of faith and obedience is also how you crucify the flesh. It's because you're like, hey, I don't, this doesn't feel comfortable or whatever it is, but obedience challenges that and says, no, no, not today. We're picking up this cross, we're nailing the flesh to the tree, and we're moving towards the obedience of the Father. And so as you give today, I just, you know, I want you to know that it's not just for the, um, just to pay bills or just to keep the lights on, although that's obviously important, but it goes so much farther beyond that, that there are men and women of God ministries all over the world that are being blessed because of this house. And with your one dollar, you know, with, I mean, I hope it's more, I hope you're tithing and offering, but I just mean the, the, the physical dollar is, is granting you access into faith of the people who are fighting battles you are not and would not be able to because you don't have the calling. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's, if this is challenging for you, let's crucify the flesh today um, and, uh, and give. So let me, I'll quickly pray and then there should be a number and stuff on the screen. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for your amazing grace. God, I thank you for soft hearts and tender hearts and I ask that you'd bless every offering, every tithe here that it would go to impact the planet for the kingdom of heaven that every dollar would bring forth a soul into the kingdom of heaven. We bless God, the missionaries, the people, the ministries that are being supported through this house. We bless this house and we thank you God for increase in Jesus name, amen. So for those of you watching online, everybody here, uh, there's a phone number, there should be one on your screen as well, you can text. Um, and if you need an envelope, right? If you need an envelope, just raise your hand and uh, the ushers would be happy to hand you one. Uh, and, and we'll be back in just a moment. Bless you guys.
Hey, good morning, everyone. Can we all stand, please? Can we give the Lord praise this morning? Jesus, we love you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Thank you for all you're doing and all you've done. And Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do in this room as people will be baptized and healed and born again this morning. And that you be deeply adored. All for the glory of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise one more time? Well, I'd like to invite the baptizees forward and actually remain standing. Are they ready to, to go? Okay, well, where are they? We're only, okay, good, come on. We're only doing five this morning and many more next week. I think we'll be baptizing 10 more next week. Yeah, come on, welcome them. Would you do that, please? This is wonderful. You guys just come as close as you can right here in the middle. Ushers, help me if you would, please. There you go. All right, you can be seated. Well, this morning is very special, very holy, and uh, a big commitment. And before we baptize, we want to make sure you know what is about to happen and the beauty of it and the measure of the commitment that you're about to make. Uh, we make this commitment because the Lord committed himself to us fully. And Jesus died for us, and Jesus died as us, and he was raised on our behalf and for us and as us. So this is a very holy, holy thing that you're about to experience. I've heard many people say that it's, it's a outward symbol of an inward decision. That's true, but there's so much more uh, to what's gonna happen this morning. The word symbol in Greek actually means the coming together of that which is supernatural and natural. So even if it were a simple, it's still a heavenly encounter with the Lord. Say amen, church, do you believe that? So there are multiple baptisms in the Bible, multiple baptisms that the scriptures talk about. One is water baptism, the other is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. There's one that, that uh, we very rarely preach and teach because it's, it's a lot to handle. Uh, when the disciples asked to sit with the Lord at his right hand in the kingdom, uh, he said, are you prepared to be baptized with the baptism I am about to be baptized with? He's speaking of there the baptism of suffering and the baptism of blood. He's basically saying, I am going to die. Are you willing to follow me on the road of the cross, the road to death? So baptism is, is an all-in experience, but it is a powerful experience. Never in the scriptures will you see baptism as being separate from a move of the Holy Spirit. And that goes all the way back to the Old Testament, all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, where the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep, over the waters. And since that day, since that passage was given to the church, the church has believed that the waters of baptism are blessed because the Spirit of the Lord himself hovers over the waters. Amen? We see the cloud of God's presence go through the camp of Israel as Israel passes through the Red Sea. There again, the Holy Spirit is present upon the waters and involved in this beautiful sacrament of the church. And then we see Jesus baptized, who's the ultimate pattern, the ultimate and perfect son. As he's baptized, the heavens open above him and the Holy Spirit falls upon him in the shape and form of a dove. And the Father speaks, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so today you enter in to the identity of the Lord, the very baptism of Jesus. And I want you to think about this for a moment. Jesus himself endorsed baptism and the church has been doing it for 2,000 years. And now you are entering this holy, holy moment, becoming part of the procession of the church as we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Few things are more beautiful and few things are more dear to my heart than to baptize people in water. Now, in water baptism, as in every baptism, there are... Uh, 
there, there's a good bit going on. It's not complicated, but there's a good bit going on. Number one, we have the baptizer. When it comes to water baptism, the baptizers will be the church, um, the servants of the Lord. Then you have the baptizee, that's you. Then you have the element that you're baptized into. In this case, it's water. And then you have the result or the fruit of the baptism. And the fruit of water baptism is glorious. It's an encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's to identify with the death of Jesus. Not just the death of Jesus, but the burial of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. These are all results of water baptism. You are baptized into the Lord himself and into his people. And the scripture teaches, I just want to read this, this verse to you from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. If we could throw it up on the screen, because it's really important that the church understands these things. It's, these, are, these are supposed to be basic and fundamental. And uh, we, we just need a little work in this area. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. And this water symbolizes baptism. That, not, that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you, speaking of water baptism, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the waters do not save. The Lord himself saves. Amen? Communion would be nothing without the blood and body of Jesus. In this case, we are guaranteed that as we come into the presence of the Lord with him in heart, him in mind, as we gather in his name, that his power and presence is available in water baptism to raise you from the dead. Say that should get somebody happy here. Now, that being said, it is also a bridal bath. It is a bridal bath. Prior to Esther approaching the king, she soaked in baths. And in Israel, prior to approaching the bridegroom, the bride would soak in a bath to take on not only the removal of dirt and to be cleansed, it's very important, but to take on the fragrance of the bath because that fragrance was something the king loved and enjoyed. Does that make sense? So John the Baptist comes on the scene and he baptizes Israel and calls Jesus the bridegroom. And this is John the Baptist's way of saying, what I am doing is bridal. And baptism in water is a matter of bridal preparation. This is a marital experience. And it is holy and beautiful. Amen? So, to be baptized in water, you have to be willing to give all to Jesus. Every square inch of you. Your dreams, your visions, your future, your present. All you are. And making Jesus Lord is not our way of saying, I think you're way better than us, Lord, that he is. To, <laughs> to say that Jesus is Lord is to say that this one, this man from Galilee, this one who's born in Bethlehem, this one who has a real body is Adonai. He is Jehovah. He is the mighty God. He is the Lord himself. And being that he is the Lord, we believe that he did not purchase us with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of the Son of God. Therefore, believers in Jesus say, my entire being belongs to you. And what I need to know before I baptize you this morning, it's my joy and honor to do it, what I need to know is, are you willing to give Jesus everything today? Everything all your being and have all of you repented of your sin and turned away from the world and now you confess Jesus as Lord yes okay I'd like all of you to line up oh, actually actually stay right there don't do it yet I'd like everyone to stand I should say please and we are going to confess one of the great creeds of the church and then once they confess this great creed from their heart that really spells out the faith beautifully. And this is for all of us to declare. How many of you know there's power as we declare the identity and nature of Jesus? Amen. After that, they'll line up. We'll baptize them in water. And then some of you maybe have not seen this before, but as they come up out of the water, we'll anoint them with oil in the sign of the cross. Also not as a mere repetitious act, 
But I believe when they come up out of the water and the oil touches them, that the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon them. Amen? I've seen so many people come in. Hopefully it's not the case this morning, by the way. But come in manifesting demons. Please, don't, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> Actually, I am. But uh, I've seen many come in manifesting devils. And they come out of that water speaking in tongues and prophesying. This is a powerful thing. So I want all of us to be in faith. Okay, are you ready? All right, I want all of us to declare this. This is the Nicene Creed. I've used the Apostles' Creed and others in the past, but this morning we'll go with this one. I want you to just close your eyes and declare this with boldness. We believe in one God. We believe in one God. Louder. We believe in one God. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty. The Father, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. Maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is. Seen and, unseen. seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, we believe in one Lord. Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only Son of God. Eternally, begotten of the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God, from God. Light, from light. light from light, true God from true God, from true God. begotten not made, not made. Of, one of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. I feel the Lord. Don't say that part. You can if you like. On the third day, He rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeded from the Father. With the Father and the Son, He is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic or apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The of the world to come. Amen. Amen. That is our faith, and it is glorious. Can we give the Lord praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. All right, let's welcome the baptizees. You can line up right there, ushers. If you'd help me, please. You can all be seated. All right, so, by the way, uh, that last stanza on the, uh, where am I standing? It's a little different. Right here, right? right there. Okay. Um, when that creed says one holy Catholic church, it's not speaking of Roman Catholicism, but so, so you know. The, wor the word means one whole, universal whole church. That's what the word means. So, don't want you to think I was becoming a priest. All right? No, God bless them all. Hi there. Come forward, please. What's your name? Dante Galata. And where are you from? Uh, Kissimmee. Kissimmee. And why are you being baptized today? Um, I don't know. I just feel like God's calling me. Uh, I woke up at 7, and I got a random call from you guys. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was just... Have you given your life to Jesus? Yes. When did you do that? Um, when I was 13, I gave my life to Jesus, and then I, I had a falling out with him. Uh -huh. I, uh, I strayed a lot. And then... Um, sorry, it's 
it's no, it's beautiful. <laughs> I gave my life back to him recently. And, uh, yeah, just love him. <laughs> beautiful. Come on in. Come on. Dion, would you come stand behind me? Emily Choi, just stand here. Madeline, you too. Just be praying in the spirit. Yes. What's your name again? Dante. Dante. Would you just close your eyes? Church, would you stretch your hands? Just be praying while we're baptizing. Dante, do you give Jesus everything? Yes. Can I have a mic? I want the church to hear it. You give Jesus everything? Yes. Do you renounce the world? Yes. Do you renounce the devil? Yes. Or repent of your sin? Yes. Dante, based on your confession and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and the wonderful gospel of his kingdom, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise, church. Lord, we thank you for your anointing and the grace of the Holy Spirit. Come upon him and clothe him. Clothe him in the power of the Holy Ghost. And use him for your name's sake. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Jeff. Jeff, where are you from? I'm from California. And why are you being baptized this morning? I love Jesus. He saved my life three years ago. <clears throat> I'm here to obey his command. I'm here to publicly profess my faith in Christ and to formally give my life to Jesus as my <laughs> Lord and Savior. Come on. Come on Beautiful. Yeah. Can we just stretch our hands, everyone? Jeff, right? Jeff, do you renounce the world? I do. Do you renounce the devil? I do. Do you renounce your sin? I do. And repent from it all? I do. And do you give your full affection in life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, amen. Jeff, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now may the grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ come upon you and clothe you with His Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, the Holy Spirit's moving so beautifully. Come on, everyone. Give the Lord praise. What's your name? Good morning, Kevin. Kevin, and where are you from? I'm from Orlando. Orlando. Why are you being baptized? Um, to be honest, just reading the Bible, reading the book of John, I realized that, you know, being baptized is like the next step to getting close to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I want to have uh, an encounter with the Holy Spirit and just, you know, just to see what my purpose is in this world. Yeah. How long have you been walking with the Lord? Um, I've been back and forth. Um, I say about like, Four years ago, I gave my life to uh, Jesus in the altar. Uh -huh. uh, again, I've been back and forth. But was like, that here? No, I okay. was in a, okay. another church. Uh -huh. um, you've been kind of in and out? Yeah, 
Uh, I've been like really like lukewarm, but now I've been like really serious and I've been like reading the Bible more awesome. serious than ever before. So I really want to go into the next level. I want to give Jesus everything this morning. Huh? I'll say. All right, come on. the devil, yes, sir. your sin, yes. you repent of it all, yes. do you turn to Jesus now yes, sir. with your entire life? Yes. Father, you've heard Kevin. Kevin, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift him up. Clothe him with the precious grace of the Holy Spirit. Clothe him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lift him up. are you being baptized? Um, because, you know, I love Jesus and because he wants me to, obviously, I want to become closer with him. I want to be like intertwined, like me and him forever. <laughs> like, Where are you from? Kissimmee. Kissimmee. Mm -hmm. have, when did you come to Jesus? June. This June? Just, so just recently? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. And what's Jesus like? What would you tell somebody this morning? Oh my, I talk to him. I talk about him all the time. He's amazing. Well, if somebody's here this morning who doesn't know him, well, how would you describe him? It's just, he's like, he's like someone that you've been waiting for your whole life. You know, when you're alone, or you think you're alone, but you're never alone, he's always there. And it's amazing because he, he's always there to lean on when you're sad and he takes everything away. And he's always there. And I, oh. <laughs> I talk about him all the time. I can tell. Come on. <laughs> so beautiful. Ariana? Ariana, do you renounce the world? Yes. Do you renounce the devil? Absolutely. Do you renounce your sin? Yes. And turn from it all? Yes. Do you give Jesus everything today? Absolutely everything. Ariana, stretch your hands, church. Ariana, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.
What's your name? Brianna. Brianna. And why are you being baptized? I just feel like it's what's next in my walk with God and becoming one. So I've been excited for this for a long time. You've been excited to do it for a long time? And how long have you known the Lord? All my life, but I've been back and forth. But for a while, I've been locked in and just waiting for this moment. Where so do you live? Orlando. Orlando. It crushes the heart when you're in and out, huh? the shame and the condemnation and the Lord uh, will take it all away come on come to the water the world. I do. You renounce your sin. Do. You renounce the devil. I do. Do you give your entire life to Jesus? Yes. To be your Lord? Yes. yes. Brianna, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. the grace of the Holy Spirit precious presence in your life. May He use you, clothe you, cover you all your days. And may you redeem the time that you lost. Do it in her, Lord. Thank you for the testimony that will come through her life of your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Is that it? Oh, wow. Can we stand and give the Lord praise? Come on, give the Lord praise. How beautiful. Jesus, you can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would you come? Lord, thank you for, if you're able, I'd just like everyone to stay still right now. Lord, thank you for your, just lift your hands to heaven. Lord, thank you for the wonder of the Holy Spirit and for the power of your gospel. And Father, I believe as many were watching these precious children be baptized, that there are many in the room who want to know what they're experiencing. And so Holy Spirit, fall, fall. Come, Lord, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come upon Amy and come upon every heart, every heart that's never known freedom and every heart that's fallen away and wants to fall in love with you again. I thank you in advance, Lord, for many who find freedom this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we welcome Amy, please? I don't feel I need to say a lot in this moment because the Lord is here. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it? For a man, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, 
or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If you just close your eyes and look at Jesus and forget who is next to you, the jealous love of a savior is in the room right now. And just as you watch those stand and declare their love for him, just like that precious girl said, it's the one you've been waiting your whole life for. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. And as I was spending time with the Lord this morning, I saw a picture of weary, tired ones almost throwing themselves into a bed at night, so burned out in the striving, in the scrolling, in the comparison with a neighbor, with a friend, with a classmate, the striving for the things and the stuff that don't matter. And you are so exhausted trying in your own strength to attain something that Paul says is rubbish, it's garbage in comparison to knowing him. Paul says, I have counted but loss that I may gain him, that I may know him and be found in him. He is everything. In Matthew 6, verse 19, Jesus says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves come in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And so the Lord is looking at you. I see him looking at young people, especially if you are a young person and you are burnt out on the scrolling, you're burnt out in trying to be like the ones you look up to. There is only one worthy to look upon. There is only one worthy. There is only one that you wanna follow. There is only one that you wanna follow. And when you find him, I promise you will desire to follow no other because you'll find everything in him. This world is a vapor here today and gone tomorrow, but you can leave this room today knowing that your salvation is secure, knowing that just like those that went in the tank today, filled with the Holy Spirit, that you will know that your eternity is secure. And the weight of all of those things that you're striving for, the weight of laying down at the end of the day, trying to measure up to something that the Lord has never asked you to measure up to. Because your king is meek and humble. Your king took the lashes. Your king held on to the whipping post. Your king took a crown for you. He took holes in his hands and feet for you. He washed the feet of his disciples before the cross. That's your humble king. And he says, follow me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He stood before the accuser silent. That's the king you can follow today. Who offers himself to be one with you. Jesus in a garden prayed to his father and asked, would they be one as we were one? You can have that today, that oneness. Young people, you can decide today, you can decide today to say no more to the striving, no more, no more. You can decide to see a king who asks nothing of you but to come. So if you're in the room, And that's you this morning. You say, I've been doing it at my own strength. I've been striving. I've been trying to measure up. I've been trying so hard to measure up. I've been scrolling. I've been looking. I've been comparing. But I don't want to do it anymore. I want to break that thing off today. And come to a, leak, a meek, lowly king who bled and died for me. 
If that's you, would you just lift your hands in the room today? If that's you, just lift your hand. Thank you, Lord, for these hands. Thank you for these hands. If you're in the room and that fire has gone out, maybe you watched baptisms today and your heart didn't come alive, your heart didn't burn. You sang in worship and, and you, didn't, you didn't burn when you sang those songs. You didn't feel that piercing love like you felt the day you said yes to him. If that's you, would you lift your hands and give the Lord a fresh surrender? Give him a fresh surrender. Just lift your hands. There's no shame. Thank you, Lord, for these hands. He wants to encounter you. He wants to encounter you. He says if you confess him before men, he'll confess you before his father. Thank you for all these hands. Thank you for all these hands. Let's just stand. Let's just stand in his presence this morning. We're going to invite you to come to the altar. Not to come to us, not to come to people, but just like I said, you confess him. He'll confess you before the Father. So let's just invite them as they come this morning. There were many hands, many hands in the balcony will wait for you to come. And if you're standing there and you didn't raise your hand, but you know the Lord is talking to you, be bold and come down. Be bold and come down. If you know he's talking to you, just come. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus this morning. Come to the one who is jealously after your heart because he loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's more, we'll wait if you're still coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. And we're gonna pray, and if while we're praying, you feel the love of God just come down, you won't interrupt us. But we're gonna pray to Jesus this morning. And we're gonna look at the one who pierced your heart this morning. It was him. So we're just gonna say this out loud. We'll say it together as a church. Lord Jesus, here I am, fully surrendered. I heard you call me today, and I've responded. Today, I will deny myself. I will pick up my cross, and I will follow you worthy king thank you for loving me thank you for never leaving me thank you for opening your arms to me again today i renounce the world i renounce the devil i confess my sin and i thank you for your blood that washes me clean this morning Jesus, take me, take my life. I give it to you fully. Thank you that you came. Thank you that you died on a cross. Thank you that you were buried. Thank you that you rose again, that you ascended into heaven and are seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank you that you're coming back. Keep me, Lord. Find me ready on that day. Lord, I love you. I don't want to do it in my own strength anymore. Break every chain. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we thank the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just while you're here, just quickly, we have pamphlets for you. We have a team that will meet you outside after to answer any questions. You didn't come to an altar this morning. You came to Jesus. Know that. It is not this altar that saved you. It is the name of Jesus Christ. It is your confession and belief in Jesus Christ that saved you this morning. So to walk with him, you need to read the word of God every single day. 
It's how you learn his ways. It's how he teaches you. So read your word every day. Fall in love with Jesus, the author. It's all about him. Pray every single day. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus, just like that girl. Talk, talk to Jesus and talk about him all the time. There's no one more beautiful to talk about. Be baptized, which you just saw. We're doing it again. Be baptized quickly. Don't wait. There's something that happens in the waters of baptism, that cutting away of the old man. So don't wait. Sign up today to be baptized. Find a church that loves Jesus. You'll know because they look like him. So find a church that believes in the scripture, that welcomes the presence of the Lord. If that's here, you live in Orlando, come be a part of church. We would love to walk with you. If you're not from here, just find a church. Find a church that loves the Lord. We need each other. We're gonna pray right now that you'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that filling is so that you can go out and be witnesses, that you can tell other people about Jesus, just like you heard about him today. You will, you will preach the gospel in Jesus' name. But we're gonna pray right now that you would be filled, that you'd be filled in church. The scripture says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so we pray this for, for every one of you watching online in your homes. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, for the continual infilling, Lord, we ask right now by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you come upon these ones that came this morning, that you break every chain, Lord, that you equip them, Jesus, to walk this thing out. You equip them for every good work, Lord. We pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit for a fresh infilling, that you baptize them, Lord. You baptize them in your fire, Lord, that they would be carriers of your gospel, Lord, that you would trust them to preach the gospel, that you would trust them to preach the gospel to their family members, to their co-workers, to their neighbors, Lord. I pray that it would be such a fire in their bones, Lord, that they would not be able to walk by anyone without telling them what you did for them this morning. And I thank you, Jesus, that you fill them, Lord that you keep them, Lord, keep them, Lord. They would finish strong. They would never know a day away from you, Lord. Never know a day away from you, Jesus. Lord, that they would come close and you would keep them close. Lord, open the scriptures to them, Jesus. Open the scriptures. Open the scriptures, Lord. Use their lives, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of them. Guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for these ones, Lord. Thank you that you save them, Jesus. We bless them. We bless them as a church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome them, church. Let's welcome them. Now let's welcome them as they go back. Come on, guys. Let's give the Lord praise. Nothing better. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we lift just one more? I want to build a reputation in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for every life. For every life. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. talk to you for a few minutes. I had a message, but I, and I got up early and actually got here a little later than I normally do because I wanted to be more prepared. And then on the way here, the Lord told me not to preach it. <laughs> so I got up early, spent extra time, got here late, and uh, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> you know, it's so beautiful to watch everyone stand up while people are getting saved. It's just, uh, I love seeing it because it's our way of expressing honor for the moment, that we don't take it lightly. And I want that reputation in heaven, amen. Well, I felt like I was gonna teach on the blood. Um, I know yesterday on Instagram I said I would, but 
<laughs> I don't know what to say, <laughs> really. And maybe we'll kind of get there, but I felt like today would be like a prophetic um, pointing uh, for our course as a church family over the next few months. As you know, we just got back from Southern California and it was explosive. I mean, it was, I think, for sure, I think in San Diego we could have registered five or 6,000 people. And uh, I don't know what, we had to shut down registration early. So I really don't know, and not that that's the marker, but if for anybody who's lived out there over the last 15 to 20 years, that's really rare uh, to see people line up parking all over the street, wanting to get into the presence of God. And I can remember preaching and nobody getting saved out there when I uh, was pastoring. And uh, as I, you've heard me say a million times, if you don't want to get saved and don't want to get healed, we were the church for you. <laughs> we should have been named Miracle Free Christian Center. <laughs> but uh, the Lord actually gave me a word Tuesday morning. We met, uh, our first service was on Tuesday. And then we met uh, for prayer at the venue. And uh, the Lord said, uh, like Moses left Egypt discouraged, uh, I'm sending you and your team back to Southern California with the power of the Holy Spirit to bring deliverance. And so yesterday we had a little prayer gathering uh, on the ministry property and Dion walked up to me. Where are you, Dion? Somewhere. There he is. Dion said, I have a word for you. And I said, well, what's the word? And he said, the Lord told me that the first time you left California was like Moses leaving Egypt for the first time. And that the second time sending you back, you would go with the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit so that the Lord would bring deliverance to a people through us. And that's what we witnessed. It was powerful. I haven't seen altar calls like that in a long time. And so the Lord is stirring my soul, and, and I want him to stir your soul. Um, I'm grateful that we're in a building now that's twice as big as our last uh, facility there at Lake Brantley. Uh, it's beautiful to see people in the balcony. Uh, the Lord is adding to the church, though that doesn't necessarily mean that we're in God's perfect will. Numbers are not the indicator. His glory is, right? But I am grateful for all of you. But one of the things I miss are people getting turned away if they don't get here early. I'll just leave it there. Um, sometimes convenience dulls the soul. It's not that I glory in people getting turned away. That's not the point. But I do love hunger. And I know some of you, maybe it's harder for you to get here on time, but uh, the day's coming based on the look of this crowd where if you don't get here early, you might be watching outside. Well, it sounds like the Lord's meetings. It's really quiet here. The Gen Z millennials are real quiet. Well, actually, I saw some older people walking in late too. So <laughs> hunger is not based on age. But I came this morning to stir your soul because I'm not content. I am in his presence, but I, I don't want to lose what I have by not going after more. And that's the only way you actually keep what you currently have is by going after more. It's the only surety. There's no arrival. You know, Jess and I are finishing our masters and yesterday was our last meeting with the professor and what a precious woman. I, Hey, I was, we're driving uh, on vacation uh, this, this summer and I was going to go meet with a few of my professors and one of them who we've just fallen in love with, she's just a saint. And uh, I don't want, I'm not going to give you the name because you guys will just start emailing her and asking if we can hang out with her, which I love that about you, but I'm not doing it. So uh, I said, Dr. So-and-so, Jess and I would love to come visit you. Uh, at the university. And she said, uh, well, that won't be possible. I have a disability. I'm, I have to stay home. And I never knew that about her. 
and uh, the vibrancy, uh, the way she's teaching us, the way she points back to Jesus. Uh, we kind of see Jesus in a very similar light. And yesterday I learned so much about her, I, I learned that her husband died as well. And it, it moved me, and we began to talk about the Lord's process in us that Romans 8 talks about, this conformity into the image of Jesus. And then here's this woman who's up in age. She looks at us through the Zoom call, and she says, you do know that God's process is never done in us until the resurrection. And it's so true, but I was like, oh, yeah. You never really arrive Yes or no? Yes. You never really get to the place where you're like, you're done with me, Lord. I am so much like you that you don't need to do anything. <laughs> and if you ever get to that place, <laughs> he's like, we got to start over. You think you're that much like me. You're aware of my glory on you. Now we have a bigger problem. Remember, Moses didn't even know that his face was shining. I think in some camps that I've run with, if somebody's face was shining, they'd be like, look, my face is shining. Put the camera on it. Make sure you zoom in. Very, look at the glory on me. And uh, so the moment we think we arrive may be indicative of the fact that we might go around the mountain again. There's something about being so into the Lord that you're not even aware of um, the measure, the actual measure of his presence in you or on you because uh, you're enamored by him, and so self dissolves, which is fruit of the redemption. And the awareness of self is fruit of the fall. So all that being said, the Lord is stirring my soul. And I want to say to anybody who's watching in California, the wave is about to crash uh, on your state. I believe it. I'm... I'm a lot's been going on I, in my heart. I'm feeling it, and I'm... Uh, you have to follow the cloud, or Amalek kills you. That's the biblical pattern. So all that to say, we're coming back. We'll be there July 28th, and we're coming to Irvine. Pastor Jensen Franklin has opened his church to us. Anybody who is hungry for the Lord, anybody who knows somebody who is lost anybody who is sick, anybody who just wants to burn, you can register. There it is right there, the Jesus Image West Coast Tour, or Jesus Tour, I should say, Irvine, California. You can go just to jesustour.tv. We will be there with our whole team, and I'm expecting even more. How many of you saw the recap video? Of Did you see those healings? They were beautiful. They were holy. They were real miracles, and they came in a very beautiful uh, uh, effortless way. That's a sign to me. And people were sprinting to the altar. Yes. And I believe uh, this word that was declared by many, one of them, Brian Brent, who, who founded the Circuit Riders, the whole crew that, that Lindy and Chase are with, and the whole Brent family. He said the day will come where Orange County and Orange County uh, will connect in heart. There will be a move of the Holy Spirit from, from that area. And, and when I look back at the history of the move of God. You know, uh, we felt it when we came to this property. I don't understand all of this, but it seems to be real. Uh, <laughs> that the Lord targets regions and, and doesn't, um, if you're waiting for a chapter and verse teaching, I'll give you one so you don't think I'm a heretic. I'll make sure to do it. It's coming. But um, those seeds that are sown, they... In God's economy, the word of God never returns void. It will accomplish that which it is set out to accomplish. And you look at that region, you look at Azusa, you look at Mother Edder, you look at Amy, you look at Melody Land, you look at the Vineyard, you look at Calvary Chapel, you look at the Jesus Movement, you look at so many things that were birthed in that area, and it seems like that tidal wave is crashing again. I, I'm smelling hunger. And so we're going back. And we want to go back with your blessing, and we want to go back with ascending. We don't want to go on our own. We want to feel the weight of the church behind us because souls are at stake, and God is not done with America. I feel it deep in my bones. So that's number one. 
July 28th, come. I would register today if I were you. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if the venue would be full in the next two to three days. The pastor's conference, and all of this plays into what the Lord is doing. I'm not, this isn't a promo service. This is a, a, an alignment service. The pastor's conference, we're, this is the first time we've released this today. Francis is joining us, which I'm so pumped about. Yeah, and, and Katie, Jeremy's wife, is actually going to teach on prevailing prayer. I'm excited about Bishop Reed and his whole family is actually here. Would y'all stand up? Come on, everyone stand up. Welcome to your second home. And uh, it's such an honor to have you guys. Pastor Tommy said he wants to come. So we were like, well, then you can come. Uh, and how many of you were blessed by, by Bishop Reed last year? So he'll be back. Um, for those of you who are wanting to learn church in God's presence, for those of you who are tired of the grind, for those of you in the depths of your hearts, you're, you believe there's more, I'm here to tell you there is more. There's more than just creating some cookie cutter system that works more like a scientific formula that gets a certain amount of people in the seats, that becomes a grind in a culture that destroys marriages and families, and it becomes all about our own ability, and it's really humanistic at the core. It is about people when the church should be all about Jesus, who then births a desire to touch people by default. And uh, the, the church, before it is our home, it is the Lord's home. And the Lord is jealous over his house. And I believe the Lord is not only giving us the experience here, but the language to give it away. And that's our heart. We want to give it away. Last year, a couple thousand leaders and pastors showed up. So this is not just for senior leaders. This is for youth workers, children's workers, songwriters, worship leaders, senior pastors, executive pastors, uh, all of you who are serving in a ministry capacity. We want you to come and bring your teams, and we'll be doing that actually at Faith Assembly, which is right off of the uh, uh, 417 and, and what? Curry Ford. And it's, I think it seats about 1,000 more people than we had last year. Is that correct about that? Somewhere in there. I might get the numbers wrong. But come, uh, we, this is the first time we've announced it, so, so there's the info. Amen? I'm excited. I'll say this. I've been in a lot of services in my life. A lot. <laughs> That's probably why I need vacation. But I've been in a lot of meetings. And the meeting Friday night at the pastor's conference was the most glorious worship moment I've ever been in. It was, uh, it's indescribable when the Lord comes that way. When a people are possessed by the Lord and a sustained praise goes for a half hour and everybody's afraid to get near the pulpit because Jesus is there. And I asked the Lord why he did that. And I, he, he didn't speak super clearly to me, but in my heart I feel that he is jealous over his shepherds. He loves them and wants to minister to them. Amen. All right, that being said, every Sunday morning we gather here for prayer at 9 o'clock. So the sanctuary is open. I want you to come. Many are coming already, but I want to keep that environment. I want to steward it well. I want you to come early and seek the Lord. Additionally, Aaron, is the Bethany room open all summer, right? The Bethany room is open all summer. That is our prayer and worship room. Yeah, so all of you students who miss each other, it's a perfect way for you to get back in there. And, um, and that starts at 7.30 in the morning on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, we meet at the Central Campus. Um, it's, all the info is there online. This is my favorite place in all of Jesus' image. It's a little trailer where people are there. Uh, the sun's not quite up yet. It's just coming up. There's a beauty there. There's a rest. And there's a real glory there. I love it in that trailer. And our team is leading so beautifully there. That trailer not only connects us to the Lord, but um, whittles away the flesh that we bring to the table. It kills performance and oh, uh, human activity and teaches us uh, to know the Lord. And so I want to invite all of you. Uh, you guys can come. That starts at 7.30 every Tuesday and Wednesday morning and come minister to the Lord. Lastly, Sunday school. We have adult Sunday school. And unlike the Sunday school I grew up in, you don't get hit with wooden sticks <laughs> at the Orthodox Church. 
they would spank us with. Uh, and my mom and dad are here, and my brother and my sister-in-law, they're all here this morning. My dad drove in. And uh, I won't give the teachers names, but I do remember getting sent upstairs, and if you talk, they uh, laid, <laughs> laid sticks on you. That's the only way I can describe it. This is not that. This is the foundations of the faith. And I would love for everyone in the church to go through these. Everyone. Uh, if you haven't been through it, we meet every Sunday morning. I think it begins at 8.45. Oh, there it is. And um, we're teaching on the cross, the blood, prayer, the gospel, um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism in water, the nuts and bolts of the faith. So we'd love to have you there. Okay, let's jump in for, for about 10 minutes. And then we'll receive communion. I really felt that some of you who are believing God for a physical healing this morning, uh, I want you to come up ready to receive from the Lord as you take the communion elements. And then tonight, I will pray for the sick. My faith is high for miracles. And uh, how many of you know we are to be the people who are acquainted with miracles? The Lord is good, amen. Take your Bibles to the book of Acts. I'll get back to the blood next week. Just want to follow the leading of the Spirit. Say focus is powerful. Say it again. Focus is powerful. Say simplicity is powerful. Say it again. One more time. You're still a little calm. It's, I need more out of you. Come on. Simplicity is powerful. Good. <laughs> Someone really got it there. Acts 1.1. 1, 1. Let me read. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, speaking of the ascension, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen I just want to stop there. Jesus won't even have a Bible study outside the moon of the Holy Spirit. It's very, it's very important we understand that. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, uh, our students have heard this a few times, but there's a lot of preaching on kingdom that is void of presence and it's void of a revelation of Jesus and it's void of the gospel. So it's not kingdom teaching. If you take the king out of kingdom, you're just left with dumb and that's, that's what that is. That's what that whole pursuit is. It's, it's just weird. It sells right, it sounds deep, but it's not the kingdom because the kingdom is where the king is and it's where his rule and loving lordship is flowing and received by people who have said yes to Jesus. You will find, listen, the power and authority of his kingdom present among those who most consistently bow their knee. I don't mean just physically, though that's important. Before I take the pulpit, I go in the back and I get on my knee and I say, Lord, thank you for the privilege. I don't ever want to forget it. So there is something powerful about physically going low. I believe in that. But I'm talking about the will bowing its knee. To experience the consistent lordship and removal of evil, and that includes healing and deliverance, among a people, the ones who bow their knee most often in the heart are the ones who will experience the beauty of the king. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. I need somebody in the room who will get so hungry for the Lord that they would rather die than not experience him more. That's the only heart posture that God knows how to work with. 
If you're not hungry, get around hungry people. I'm not playing. I, I, when it comes to anything, our, 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 our school team, our worship team, our media team, culturally, in my head and heart, it sounds like this. I don't care who the most gifted is. Give me the most hungry. I will bench people gladly if there's somebody who's less proficient on an instrument who's more hungry. Because we're not conducting an orchestra. You follow me? This is not some like performance. The only way we know our set was good was whether or not the Lord came. So once we understand that, we have to ask ourselves, what does the Lord respond to? And he loves hunger. And so this church really depends, and the, the future of this church depends on those who say, here I am on the altar again. I don't want to talk about my... I can't live and ride the, 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 the testimony of four years ago. I'm going to ride it until my next experience with the Lord. But I don't want that fire to go out. And I'm reading this passage to you because I want to say as the pastor, I'm grateful for all the Lord has done and all he is doing, and I'm not blind to what he's doing. He's doing many beautiful things. But we need a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful for every soul, but I want the aisles packed until they're going out the door. I'm grateful for every moment the Lord comes into the room and responds to our worship. But I don't want to wait till the music for that to happen. I want more. I want our, our musicians to play and weep and laugh at the same time. I want more. I want a greater glory here. I want Jesus to make himself so at home here that he can unveil the reality of who he is. That's what I want. And, and then at the end of the day, it kind of begins with me as the leader. I've got to throw myself on the altar, but, but it's got to get on all of us. And the good thing about it is if it just gets on two or three, then we've got a beautiful problem. We do need to be disrupted. We do need to be disrupted in the most beautiful, holy way. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked in verse 6, saying, listen carefully now. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see the distraction in the disciples here. When will Rome leave? When will my candidate be in office? Just saying. I was so grieved the other day. I didn't hear the name of Jesus come out of a preacher's mouth the other day on camera, but all I heard of was about political agenda. And it's not that that doesn't serve a role in society. Of course it does. But preachers are called to preach the gospel. And if the gospel isn't majestic enough to capture our attention, that's proof of a void in our own heart. It's a fact. See, because for some of you, in fact, I see it in some of your eyes right now. Some of you are a little frustrated with me. Um, if you think Jesus exists for something else to happen, then you've lowered him and made him an employee of somebody else you want him to lead you to. You don't understand that he's from the highest heaven. Now, all of this should bow its knee. I'm not saying that. We need, we need righteous people in every area of life. That's not the point. The question is, how do you get it? And even in the getting it, is that the supreme goal? What is the supreme end? I feel the Lord now because he's happy. 
What is the supreme end to this thing we call the gospel? Where does it actually end? What is the crescendo of this thing we call Christianity? What does that look like to you? It looks like his kingdom, ruling and reigning in every sphere of society. Fine. Who is the king and what does his kingdom look like? If it's void of a bloody tree, it's a foreign kingdom. I don't know that one. I don't know the Jesus who lords over people with volume and threats. I've never met him. I don't find him in the text. I've never seen him. And to be honest with you, I want nothing to do with him. That is not the Jesus of the gospel. It might be our construction. But it's not the Jesus of Galilee. There is not a superhero on the throne up there. There is a lamb who has been slain that's seated on the throne. This is the gospel, friends. And this is what I want to say, that Jesus works for no one. Look, I love golf. I wish every single uh, golfer was born again. <laughs> I do. Could make for much more peaceful uh, golf, you know, days on the golf course. Golfers are very interesting. If you want to get to know somebody, take them on the golf course. Uh, the most godly people can turn into demons if they hit a bad shot. It's fun to watch. It's hilarious. Of course, I want people to, I want righteousness to rule and reign, but, but the moment I start thinking that earthly structure is the goal and that Jesus himself is subservient, I have lost the majesty of the gospel in my heart and mind. Why am I, why am I bringing that to you? I want you to see what Jesus does here. Because dulled hearts are always connected to distraction. So here they are. Here's the resurrected Christ in front of them. And they go, hey, when's Rome out? So that Israel can have her place back. And what does Jesus say? You will receive power. It's not for you to know the times and the seasons of all this. It's not for you. These things are under the Father's control. Give it to the Lord. Here's what you need to know. The Holy Spirit's coming. And I have news for you. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. Governments rise, governments fall. That is the full breath of history. But the Holy Ghost and his church remains. Jesus remains. There is one kingdom that is unshakable. He is the king of the unshakable kingdom because he himself is unshakable. I'm not telling you to not vote or do things biblically. Of course you should. But do not fall into the trap that would cause you to ask a question like the disciples. Jesus, we're glad you've been raised from the dead. Now fix our little situation. No, he calls them higher. He calls them to the fuel of the kingdom, the person of the kingdom, the one who gives the kingdom pace and energy and true kingdom dominance, the person of the Holy Spirit. Are you to say, Michael, that you believe Jesus and his gospel is the one-stop shop to fix every issue, both seen and unseen? That is exactly what I'm saying to you this morning. That's exactly what I'm saying to you because I don't serve a Lord who is half of something. He is all in all. I see Jesus biblically. And he is the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the ages, the Lord of heaven, the Lord of the earth, the Lord of the bride, the Lord of Israel. He is the Lord. That's how I see him. And I think he enjoys it. That's how I want to keep seeing him. And the only way to see him in that light is to fall on your face in his presence until he lights you up. The church should have one conversation, her bridegroom.
Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is the best part. Give me five more minutes, then we'll receive communion. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, this is hilarious, as he went up in a body, he's flying, basically. Not like this, don't ever anybody email me. It's going up in the air. It's still quite amazing. <laughs> Michael says he can fly. He sort of did. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, this is the most, this is the funniest question. There's two angels, and they come to meet with the men, these the disciples. Jesus is going up literally through the atmosphere, which is very important, into the heavens, above the highest height. He's on his way up. They're watching it happen. It, didn't, you know, this actually happened. He did this in a human body. And the, the angels have, uh, <laughs> they must have a sense of humor because they said, hey, men of Galilee, look at verse 11. Why do you stand up gazing into heaven? Now, if that were me, I would have said, uh, what do you mean, why? I've never seen this before. <laughs> this is amazing. He's going through the sky. Then they say, this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. In other words, the way he went up is the way he's coming down. Yes. Now you fast forward to chapter 2. I'm going somewhere here. It says here in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one, and, and, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled, say all, all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They gathered. The Lord told them. I want to see the progression. Lord, when will you fix our earthly issues? He turns them to the person of this spirit. In other words, to the presence of God. Once they're reminded, they decide to wait and obey his command. To tarry and wait in his presence. Until the promise of the Father is given. They then receive the promise of the Father. The person of the Holy Spirit. And the response is thousands coming into the kingdom. Birth such a movement that today we live in its wake. Never shortchange one encounter with God. Never. Now we see the Holy Spirit moving again. In Acts chapter 3, the lame man is healed. The Holy Ghost comes upon Peter and he pre and he. He and John minister healing to this man. In chapter 4, Peter and John are arrested. And look at verse 8 of chapter 4. Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, say, I need more. Look at verse 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats. This is the church praying as they're persecuted. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By doing what? Stretching out your hand to heal. This is what Jeremy prayed in the back before San Diego. And did he ever. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Look at verse 31 now. And when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, say, I need more. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Would you play there, Joel? Look at chapter 8. Verse 15. Now when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. 
Say, I must have more. Say, our church must have more. Before you receive communion, I just, I just want to end with this. So, uh, there's this way about Jesus that frustrates us. I, I, it used to frustrate me. Uh, now I, I actually love it. But there was, time, there was a time where I didn't understand. It didn't seem right. Sometimes our, I don't know, maybe the way you grew up or your culture or this or that. I don't know. I don't know how these things affect our view of the Lord. But they do. And the Lord says in Mark chapter 4 that he scatters seed. And that some of the seed uh, falls on uh, shallow soil. There's no root. It's destroyed. That Some of the seed is scorched by the sun. Uh, some of the seed is choked out by the cares of life. And the deceitfulness of riches. In other words, what we pursue offers no, no honey for the soul. And it, it, uh, it, 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 it takes our focus off of the Lord, just like the disciples there in, in, in Acts chapter 1. When will you restore uh, Israel? When will she receive uh, in the natural, who she's called to be, and the Lord points them to another, another vision, another perspective, another bullseye. And when we, we, when, when we pursue riches and the deceitfulness of them and the cares of the world, it's the same thing happening. It's just our vision just goes this way just enough. But here's the thing about the outpouring of the Spirit. He doesn't land on moving targets. He doesn't know how. He understands his worth. He understands his value. So he doesn't come upon people with divided focus. He can't trust them with his glory because his glory will kill them. So here the Lord says, that those are choked out by the thorns, the riches of this world, the deceitfulness, the cares of this world, I should say, the deceitfulness of riches. And then he talks about this seed that falls by the wayside and the devil steals that. Now, where is the wayside? Say, it's, it's on the side of the way. Super deep. And so, if, in, in, in plowing terms, you have this, the Lord here, he's, the, the ground's been plowed by his process, the painful one in our lives, and uproots everything and tills the soil. But nonetheless, there's a, there's a row of, uh, that's been plowed here, and it's good soil, and the Lord can trust it. And so, he takes the seed and starts throwing it, right? But he's so generous he kind of casts seed like a sprinkler. And the seed's going everywhere. And there's only one place where the seed is susceptible to the devil stealing it, and that's on the side of the way. So the presence of Jesus, living in the presence of Jesus, why it's so important you're rooted in a house with the people that you can give your life to, is because you can't even discover really the will of God properly for your life until you actually get into the soil and die. And so the Lord starts going like this and he starts spreading the seed and, and then the enemy looks for susceptible seed that's not in that moist, beautiful, fertile row. So walking with Jesus right behind him while he's sowing his seed is vital if the seed's not going to get stolen. That seed is safe. Now that seed bears a fruit, a certain level of fruit. And the Lord goes on to say this, to whom much is, uh, I should say, to him who has little, even what he has will be taken. That doesn't seem fair. To him who has, he will be given more. Oh, man. That's a big deal. And then, in other words, let me say it like this. Okay. Oh, help me, Lord. I, I, I did a much better job at school when I taught on it. Um, the only way to keep what he has spoken over me. Well, no, that wasn't the right way to say it. The only way to keep what he has spoken is to hear what he is saying. That didn't. I'm trying. All right. How I receive his word now is what protects his word spoken into my life in the past. Okay? And if I listen now, 
I receive more and then more is given. But the moment I stop listening now, stop leaning in now with a soul focus, I run the risk of losing all I have in the past spiritually. It's why when somebody backslides, they forget every prophetic word ever spoken over them. Like in a month, it's just gone. Then they get back in the presence of the Lord. They start spending time in prayer. They start reading the scriptures. And all of a the sudden, their spiritual history erupts within them. They go, now it makes sense. But distraction will destroy that. You cannot look to the wayside and you cannot live by the wayside. We must live in the way. This is what I want to say. I want everyone to stand, please. Would you just lift your hands to heaven? I want to pray this. I know the Lord will hear it because I am burning again in my heart. And I want us all to burn. Just lift your hands to the Lord. I just want you to gently pray in this spirit. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask you to pour your spirit out upon us. To pour your spirit out, Lord, in our own hearts individually and upon us as a people. Come, Lord Jesus, in your glory, we ask you to fill our hearts and our lives and our minds and our thoughts. Touch us, Lord. Touch us again. We have no trophy, Lord, but you. You're the gift and the goal. And so we ask you in Jesus' name to come here. Why don't you just put your hand on your heart? Lord, come here. Come into our hearts again. We, we hear you knocking. Touch us and fill us, I pray. Oh, touch us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. You're the king. You're the end all, not our initiatives. Not our plans, not man's plans. In the end, a lamb will be on the throne. And a lamb is on the throne now. Give us eyes. Give us eyes for the age to come. Give us eyes for heaven. We lay aside every weight, all these things that so easily ensnare us and hold us down. We lay them aside in Jesus' name. Now move in us, I pray. Amen. 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 Can we give the Lord praise this morning? Ushers, would you come forward? Thank you, Lord. Would you just lift your hands one more time to heaven, church? Father, as we receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, examine us, look to us. Look in us, I should say. Remove anything in us that is grieving, anything in us that is uh, unholy, anything we've done, said, or thought, we repent this morning, and we ask you, Lord, to cleanse us. And I pray, Lord, now that your presence and power would come upon uh, these elements and that we would receive the true body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and that you would heal your people as they receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Aaron, would you come, bud? We will bring you up row by row. The ushers will help. You'll then take the elements. You go back to your seat and receive. I want to ask that nobody receive alone. If you, did, if you did come by yourself this morning, ask somebody if they can join you. Or if, uh, if you see somebody alone, I want to encourage you to take communion with them. And you can pray for one another, receive the body and blood of Jesus, and then you're dismissed. God bless you.
guys, Michael here from Jesus Image in Orlando, Florida. We are so excited to be coming to the West Coast of America, specifically California, and we really believe this is the Lord and that He is about to move in great power and glory in America. And it's an honor for us to be part of that storyline. That being said, we want to broadcast these incredible meetings to the world. As you know, the Lord has really blessed uh, the media ministry here at Jesus Image. We have an amazing team, but at the end of the day, we all know and are aware of the fact that it is the Holy Spirit. We need a separate system to broadcast the Jesus Tour and our other events on the road. The cost of that is $350,000. And so I'm asking all of you to pray and to deeply consider being a part of helping us see the nations tune in to the move of the Holy Spirit on the West Coast. So would you pray about sowing a seed and walking in generosity? I know the Lord will bless you for it as we give back to Him what He's already given us for the sake and glory of His name. Years ago, we felt our hearts burning for a place that would invite wholehearted, devoted lovers of Jesus to come sit at His feet and to hear His voice. What the Lord is doing at Jesus School is just so special. There's really nothing like it. It's like your eyes open and you see Jesus in a way that you've never known Him before. We've seen miracles, we've seen people born again, we've seen people set free. We've seen worship go up in the most beautiful way as Jesus is being adored. And it's the presence of Jesus and the presence of Jesus alone that changes lives. What makes Jesus School so special and so unique is it really is all about Jesus. It's the simplicity of loving Him and being with Him. It truly transforms your life. There is absolutely no substitute for the presence of the Lord Jesus. And that's what Jesus School is. It is a house for His glory and a people who love Him with everything in their hearts. When you lay all the other things down, lay them at His feet, and when you just want Him, you will never be the same.